you how to feed your snake. We're going to start off by first showing you with Ka here and a mouse. <laughs> first, I'm going to show you the proper technique, what to do, what not to do. And then afterwards, I'll show you in real life with some real snakes. If you just got your first snake or you're thinking about getting a snake and the thing that really turns you off is feeding them, then have no fear. This is the video just for you. As well, I have a playlist for beginners getting into snakes with everything that you need to learn and that will be linked in the description below or just look for it in the playlist and you will find it. Here we have a snake <laughs> and here we have food. This is the closest I could get to a mouse. Your number one tool is going to be forceps or if it's a big snake you could use those claw things so you just go to the dollar store get a claw or you could get a nicer longer forceps. I feed all of my snakes regardless of their size with these forceps and that is not wise because a large snake could possibly bite my hand but I've also been doing this for a long time so it never happens because I understand kind of how the snakes move and how to read them and everything. I'm going to try and help you understand also the best and safest ways to feed your snake. Number one is you're always going to want the head of the mouse to go into the mouth of the snake. You always want that head to be kind of pointing towards the snake's mouth. So if you have a smaller snake, like a baby snake or something, you have the appropriate size meal and you put it inside your forceps, and forceps are better than the other ones. The other ones that can just grab the food, like these, but these, they don't have a lot of pressure, and as the mouse gets like heavier or rat gets heavier, it'll slide out, and the last thing you want to do is drop the food into the snake's home and then try to be getting it back. That's a sure recipe to get bit. And the longer you go without being bit, Sometimes the better you feel other times, you know, if, if you have a baby snake and it bites you or something That for me actually made me a lot less afraid of snakes the first time I was bit by a Six-foot boa. I was like, oh, I'm bleeding now. It doesn't even hurt So it made me a lot less afraid of them and because of that sometimes I'll just go and do things quickly not always the most proper way but if you want to avoid being bit and you do all these things that I show you you're never going to be bit while feeding your snakes, okay? So little snakes, you're going to kind of, you're not going to grab the snake by the mouse by the tail and go like this. Because when you do this, you're going to take it to the snake and the snake might bite it. And then when the snake bites it, it could be like this. And then the snake is trying to swallow it, but it's, it's not getting in the mouth. It's not able to do it. And then it spits it out and doesn't eat it. There's nothing worse than the smell of a rotting rat. So you want to make sure that your snakes are eating their food. And the best way to do this is to try to get this head into the head of the snake. So with little snakes, you're gonna be able to do this and kind of direct that head towards the mouth of the snake and do, 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 do get the snake kind of coming. Always be on this side of the snake and kind of you can gently tap the, the nose of the snake like this. Now, if the snake isn't excited and it's not really like reacting that much to the food, you can take these and you can squeeze your mouse or rat's head until its brain kind of crushes and there'll be a little bit of ooze that comes out of the mouth. And that will really excite the snake sometimes. So they will uh, smell that and then they might go for it. So that's a little trick that you could do. We're now focusing more on proper feeding techniques. I have other videos that will show you if the snake's not eating, how to kind of get your snake to eat, but this is more just proper technique for feeding. If it's a big snake, then you might, then you want to have longer forceps like this, like a, the claw or a longer pair of these. And stainless steel are great because they don't rust. If you get a cheap metal pair, they're going to rust on you. So you want like surgical, um, surgical forceps and then they're they're just better quality they'll last you forever they're easy to clean and everything i'll put a link to these if you look up to amazon links in my profile there'll be a canadian one and a u.s or international one so you can click on either of those and i'll find a pair for you to order and you can order that and it'll help send me a couple cents 
<laughs> also, if you find this training, you know, valuable, educational, consider uh, joining, becoming a member, becoming a Patreon, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, I always teach people everything for free, but if you're willing to support me, that really helps. The last time that I was bit feeding a snake was like years ago, and it was Sahara, and she was my sweet, sweet snake. But I was in a rush, and this is what I did, okay? I came from this side of the snake, and I brought the food like this. So I didn't go in front of the snake's face. I was here at the side, okay? So I was, gonna, I was trying to feed the snake from the side. And what ended up happening was my hand has a heat signature, right? So as I'm bringing the food, the snakes, they're very sensitive to smell and they're very sensitive to heat. So what she did was she smelled the rat, which put her into feeding mode, okay? And then she, the rat was here, but she was drawn to the heat of my hand and she went like this. She went, and she bit my hand. And I just, if, if, for whatever reason you were to get bit by a snake you never want to pull away if if the snake gets you you just stay still it'll figure it out and it'll let go if it doesn't let go you can spray it in the mouth with a little bit of vinegar but anytime you get bit by a snake you you just don't even want to react and usually it's so fast that you're not really able to anyways unless you just do this and if you do this the teeth are going to be stuck in you. You could rip your snake's teeth out. They'll go deeper in you. They'll hurt you more and everything. Whereas if the snake bites you, it's just like a pile of needles. Because the snake's jaw does not have strength like a cat or dog. Okay? The needles are the teeth. They're like hooks that grab the food and kind of trap it. So it just grabs the food and then they wrap around and that's how they kill their prey. They don't kill their prey by like eating it or chomping it like some other snakes do, like cobras or dry marcon. Cobras will bite them with poison, wait for them to die, and then swallow them. But constrictors, like boas and ball pythons, they're going to grab the prey with their teeth, wrap around it, and they're going to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until there's a heart attack. So lots of people think that snakes will crush the animal's bones, but they'll actually just kind of cut off the circulation and give that animal a heart attack, and then they will eat it once it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so you never want to bring the food from the side. You always want to put yourself in front of the snake and have the food in front of the snake. So little snakes, you grab the food like that and you put the he head towards the head, head towards head, always head towards head. And this way you can always gauge the distance. You know how far the snake can go. But if you come from over here, you don't really know the distance that the snake can reach. So by going from here, you keep yourself safe. And then with the bigger ones, I'll see them, I'll pay attention to what's going on, and with them, I don't worry as much about them not figuring it out, because they'll, they'll always figure out and eat it. But with young ones, sometimes they get a little overwhelmed, or they get scared, and then they don't eat their food, so you might have to do this. Again, you know, pick it up, bring it to the mouth, and do that. And then if you are dealing with a little one, and you fed it, and you drop the food, and you have to get it, you just take something like this, like just a panel, a piece of cardboard, whatever, and you cover the snake, you kind of separate it from the food, and then you go in and you grab the food, and then you do it again. And feeding them at night will usually result... I always try to... I always try to feed my snakes at night, and that way it's their natural time to eat. You have your frozen rat, you pull it out the day before, overnight it dethaws, and then you can feed it. Or if it's something little, you pull it out in the morning, by nighttime it'll be dethawed, and you can feed it. And you should be able to feed it without heating it or without doing anything else. If this doesn't work, I have videos for you to watch that'll teach you a whole pile of different tricks that you can use to get your snake to eat. So you don't want to feed your snakes by hand ever. Like I have a couple snakes that I can feed by hand, but it's not a wise decision. They get too excited, they go into feeding mode, it's not like you're just feeding the snake. When the snake smells a rodent, when it smells a bird, when it smells a rabbit, when it smells any type of rodent or bird, that turns on the feeding response. So that feeding response is kind of what gets them going. It makes them a little crazy. Think about sharks with blood. They're not able to think the same. They get super excited. If there's another snake in their home or something, they might try to eat it. They might try to eat you. <laughs> Like, and it's not that they're trying to eat you, it's just food, they get crazy, so you have to be careful. 
you give yourself the distance, you make sure head to head, because then the other thing, sometimes they'll get the food by the butt, and there'll be the two legs sticking out, and they're trying to eat it, and it looks so silly, but they can't eat it. So you always want to feed it mouth to mouth, and you always want to kind of be coming from this part of the snake, or this part of the snake. You always want the snake to be reaching out to get to you. The biggest mistake you can do is go like this, okay? So you, you don't go like this. You, uh, if you have to move the snakes around or anything, do it before bringing food into the room. I have some snakes that are together in pairs and stuff. When I'm gonna feed those pairs, I make sure that I separate them to feed them. Then I bring the food into the room. I never feed them in the same enclosure. I never bring the food before moving them because the moment there's food in this room, all of the snakes get excited and it's the most dangerous time that you kind of have with your animals when you're feeding them. So you wanna do it in a careful, responsible way so that you don't get hurt and you don't hurt your snake. Now enjoy watching some snakes eat. Hi, Charles. Naomi. be careful because they can come flying out too. For this girl all I do is leave her right there and she'll eat it on her own.